Okay, today we're going to continue on with a little bit more about the class E circuit, and specifically we're going to focus on what we call the parallel class E circuit. So the schematic shown at the top here is the classic class E network. It consists of a choke, or what we'll call a BFL. Now this is, of course, a joke from uh, Tom Lee. Uh, he called a choke for a very large inductor uh, a uh, big, fat inductor. But what we really mean by this is that the susceptance of the inductor is close to zero. We call this the series class E largely due to this excess reactive uh, component that we have, the uh, excess inductance that's uh, created by the component L. Now this isn't a very practical circuit to use in real life, and the reason is that it's very impossible to integrate um, uh, BFLs. They take up too much silicon area and are generally too lossy to use on a real chip. So the solution was proposed by Grabinikov, and it's called the parallel circuit. Now what Grabinikov noted was that we could replace the choke inductor with a shunt inductor uh, that had a susceptance that was non-zero. And if we tune it so that we still have our zero voltage switching behavior, then everything still works the same. So if we look at this, our shunt circuit consists of this shunt inductor and shunt capacitor. And we can embed the parasitic capacitance from the drain into this shunt capacitor. And we still have our series resonant circuit comprised of L0 and C0. So it turns out that if you just grind through the math, uh, you can come up with a solution uh, for this circuit that will result in zero voltage switching. And it was interesting to note, I was reading a paper by uh, uh, Fritz Robb the other day, and one of the things that he noted was that uh, the SoCals uh, never called their circuit uh, an optimal circuit or, or stopped calling their circuit an optimal circuit and started calling it a nominal circuit, noting that there were other ways to achieve the same performance uh, that they achieved ultimately with their original circuit. So here with this shunt circuit, we can calculate a new R-op, a new L shunt, and a new C shunt. So our new R-opt is equal to 1.365 VDD squared divided by P out. Our L shunt is equal to 0 0.732 times R-opt divided by omega, the frequency of operation. And our C shunt is equal to 0 0.685 divided by omega times R-opt. And these are all derived by uh, Gravenikov. Now we'll note that the C shunt needs to also include any capacitance that's due to parasitic at the drain of the transistor. Now, because of the drain capacitance, this technique cannot be extended to all frequencies. Uh, it's limited by CD. In other words, uh, C shunt uh, needs to uh, have some value, and if CD is bigger than C shunt, uh, then this doesn't work optimally. One thing to note here, though, is that this 1.365 factor in R opt is very good for us. The factor here reduces the required impedance transformation in order to produce the same amount of power. Recall for the series circuit, the uh, factor there would have been 0 0.577. So this is almost two times bigger than it is for the series class E circuit and more than two times bigger than even a class B circuit. So remember, this means that we have a smaller impedance transformation in order to deliver the same power. Uh, hence, the losses in the matching network will be reduced. As mentioned a moment ago, there is a maximum operating frequency, and the maximum operating frequency was also derived by Grabenikov. It's equal to 0 0.0798 times the alpha power divided by the drain capacitance times, sorry, this should be VDD squared. So what this is really telling us is that C shunt cannot be less than the drain capacitance. And if it is, it will be non-optimal operation. Uh, but it should be noted that this might still be okay because non-optimal operation of a class E power amplifier might still yield higher efficiency than other classes of amplification. So if we do a comparison between 
the series class, the classical class E circuit, uh, we have the values for capacitance, optimum termination resistance, and series reactance shown uh, in the figure. And in our parallel class E circuit, we have the following. So we have the shunt inductance, which is no longer a choke, being equal to 0.732 times R opt over omega. The shunt capacitance equaling 0.685 divided by omega times R opt. And finally, a termination resistance equal to 1.365 times VDD squared over P out. And we note that we can replace our R opt with 50 ohms uh, in a matching network. And we don't need to leave any excess reactants looking towards the load. All right, so we're going to stop there for now. And in the next set of slides, we will look at some comments on class E and then some practical implementation. Uh, and I will uh, talk specifically about uh, an implementation uh, that I had uh, invented uh, for pulse width modulation and supply modulation.